on, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Maddie Show. This week, we've got a full return of Ravnica spoiler, and it's time to gush. What's awesome? What's going to drive your metagame or kick your ass unlimited? We're taking a look at all of it. First up is Angel of Serenity, a card that flew under the radar when spoiled, if you'll pardon the pun, but ultimately, after being eschewed at first, has now got newfound respect for being a completely ridiculous blowout. Note that anything that this card, Oblivion Rings, will be returned to their owner's hand and not their graveyard. This is very important and makes this card infinitely more powerful. Seven mana monsters need something to replace Elish Norn at the top of the curve, and this angel is going to do some work. I expect her to make waves in a variety of formats, the least of which being standard. Speaking of Oblivion Ring, Detention Sphere is absolutely nutty. I mean, Oblivion Ring is one of the best magic cards ever designed, and what can make it better? Oblivion Ring, all the things! Man, that sure is a nice grave crawler, too, you got over there. Oh, perhaps you got the lucky double giraffe's messenger draw. Yeah, nice deck you got there. But while everyone was convinced Attention Sphere was going to do some serious damage to zombies, all of a sudden we saw Golgari Charm. Oh, hells yes, Golgari Charm. Now, I've heard players saying this card isn't very powerful, but I disagree strongly. In fact, I'd say it does everything the zombies deck wants to do. First, it destroys that damned Attention Sphere. Second, when you're bashing in to get the free regens. Thirdly, when you really want to trigger your Blood Artist, what would be better than killing your own Blood Artist, Grave Crawlers, and whatever else your opponent blocks? with. Imagine them jump blocking your Giraffe's Messenger with their Restoration Angel, a very common play. Then you minus one, minus one, get a ton of sweet Blood Artist triggers, and kill that annoying, overpowered Angel, and ideally them on top of it. So yeah, if you doubt the power of Golgari Charm, give it a few weeks and we'll talk. But let's talk fatty. Let's talk serious, crazy fat. You know, fatty, fat, fat. OMG, let's bring the pain fat because our motto worm, holy cow, this thing makes my dreams come true. When you thought all the fatties were leaving us from Scars and Mirrored and all of a sudden the Celestia make double dragon look absolutely silly. Guess we'll lose evasion and add trample and work perfectly with our guild mechanic, huh? Rawr! Our motto worm is an absolute slam dunk for any cube enthusiast and for those who want to bring beats. This is the number one guy in standard to do so. You can have your hunt masters. My cavern of souls names Mofo and Worm. Thank you very much. And since we're bouncing around, let's go back to the charms for a second. While Golgari charm is awesome, and we'll see a ton of play, just like the rest of them, what would you call the best charm? I know which one I do. Azorius charm. Yeah, it may not look like much, but let me assure you that every single ability is relevant. Every single ability will work beautifully with aggro control decks, and of course, over half of its abilities will impact the board in some meaningful way. Giving your horde of beaters lifelink will matter and will turn the game around. They flipped over an attack, you Azorius charmed that silly insectile aberration to the top of their library. This matters a lot. And will turn many games that were surefire losses into surefire wins. Now I know is that charm gets all the attention, but rest assured this is the real deal. Now, is it just me, or is Loxodon Hierarch with one less mana, one less power, one less toughness, and life gain really not a common? I guess popper cubes all over the world rejoice because Centaur Healer is an incredibly pushed card as a common. But I'll take it. Hell of a gnarled mass. Know what I'm saying? Now, next up, possibly the best name of the set, is that Stratocaster is awesome. Firstly, I hope there's a Fender licensing deal in the works. Seriously. But this card basically says, tap, destroy all Lingering Souls tokens. A lot. Also, Grave Crawlers. This is a card that's pushed in a variety of ways. One in that it is the first ever haste pinger with flash. And the second is that its pinging ability is crazy good. Now, it can hit players, and that often matter with Cunning Spark Mage. But I'll take a metagame scalpel anytime I can get it. While Lingering Souls isn't exactly a force in the metagame any longer, this little guy assures that if or when that occurs, it will quickly exit. And you want to know what really excites me? Deathrite Shaman. This guy is the new Swiss Army Knife of Standard. It just does everything. It's removing spells. It's removing creatures. It's removing lands. It's a one-two for one mana. The goodness just keeps coming. But you know what the real secret of the power of this card is? The words a graveyard instead of your graveyard or your opponent's graveyard. This means I can remove spells from any graveyard and have my opponent lose life. Discarding creatures to the law troll? Might as well get them out of there. And oh yeah, I gained two for the trouble. This card is a sicko and will fly under the radar for a while. And I think play are just starting to catch on. But how about them key runes? Yep, 
key runes for everybody because we no longer have signets. Instead, these signets make their own mana and become awesome creatures to boot. While the jury is still out on how good these things actually are or could be, I, for one, think these guys are awesome. Sure, they made the Azorius one the worst, which is appreciated because Delver, you know. And the Rakdos key rune is actually awesome now that Gutshot isn't in the format any longer. I'm leery of their constructed applications, but I'm positive these will be doing heavy lifting in your limited decks, fixing and smashing all at the same time. This is a terrific design. So I always keep a keen eye for interesting and unique spells. And Skullrend is a fascinating one. Why? Because it's the first targeted random discard to be printed in years and years. Matter of fact, the last time they printed discarding at random was Black Cat. But for targeting, you'll have to go all the way back to the all multicolor menagerie of Alara Reborn with Sanity Nars. While I think Wizards safely costed this out of Constructed, it is a fascinating ability to bring back, and its ability is unique and powerful. Now, speaking of fascinating, a card that has been endlessly fascinating to me is Mana Bloom. This one has my spider senses tingling, and I asked Twitter for their opinion as well, and the feedback, well, they have no idea, or it sucks, or it's just worse than Farseek. Well, I'm not convinced this is crap. I am convinced it is either super good, super terrible. There's no middle ground. Another interesting aspect is that you can use it once per turn, meaning even on your opponent's turn, you can get mana out of it, which I think is very peculiar and interesting language to use on the card. One to watch. Now, Udvara Hellkite feels like it was just made for Commander players, and I love it. Somehow get this monster into play by whatever means necessary. Attack with your Tiny Dragons, your Changelings, and whatever, and boom! Six sixes all around! This is such a sick Otemi card. I love making the fatty boom, and this one brings the boom booms. The kitchen table crowd can't be happier for this guy. Time for a quick hit. Gorehouse Chainwalker, despite being yet another ridiculous name for a card, is a very powerful one. If the Rakdos deck is looking for a two-drop, I think this one will fit just fine. If nothing else, you best believe this will see playing cubes all over the world as a two-mana 3-2 three -two that can't block is playable all day in aggressive decks. Speaking of red cards, Ash Zealot is yet another card that hates on Snapcaster Mage. Sure, they've got Rest in Peace and Dryad Militant, but when you need something for the aggressive red decks, right? Well... I think it's wrong, and here's why. Back in the day, there was this annoying over-the-top deck called Valakud. It featured Primeval Titan and Valakud and would kill you in pretty much four or five turns tops. Then Wizards was sure they put a stop to all that silliness with a card called Tunnel Ingus. The days of Valakud were over, the pundits cried and the devs hoped. Not so, not at all, in fact. This card completely face-planted as it tried to stop a deck that would just kill it and then play Primeval Titan and kill you. And Ash Zealot reminds me a lot of Tunnel Ignis. Another wizard scalpel meant to deal damage to a popular and powerful strategy. I do hope it does some damage versus old Snappy, but I don't think it's going to work. I guess we'll see. As I mentioned just now, Rest in Peace was created solely to stop any and all Snapcaster shenanigans forever. Seriously, stop it, Snappy. We're tired of your crap. You see Morning Tide? Yeah, whatever. To the juicer with you. Now in the real world, you have a problem. This card, by itself, is the goggles. They do nothing. While, yes, it does remove things and stop them from ever thinking about hitting the graveyard, it doesn't actually affect the battlefield. And that's a bar that most cards have to pass in order to be a played or effective. Now, not all of them, of course course, as Nile Spellbomb, for example, saw plenty of play despite not affecting a thing on the board, but it cantripped. Now that card is leaving, and this is what we have left behind. While I have serious doubts about Ash Zealot, they gave Flores this one a preview, meaning it should make some waves and construct it. I can imagine an enchantment that does immediately remove everything is better than a creature that tries to take advantage of them playing things from their graveyard later. One of these things is easier to kill than the other. You know what I'm saying? So that's it for this week. You know I could keep going on and on about Return of Ravnica, and if you've enjoyed it so far, then you're really going to get a kick out of Brad Nelson and I discussing the whole set. Coming next week to YouTube and running all week long, we'll discuss every card from beginning to end, giving you wacky and fun opinions for hours on end. I do hope you'll join us. So until next time, Magic Players, this is Evan Irwin. Tapping the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.